We are farmers. Off. I retired from, from, from General Motors. I hi hired in 1954, 54, and I retired in 1995. I worked uh, at, in the Pontiac studio, the uh, 66 Pontiac front end is my design that I did when I was in Pontiac studio. I worked on quite a few cars. Uh, the uh, Grand Prix. I worked on the Corvairs too. I got to work when Harley Earl was head of design back in the f middle 50s. And I learned his design principle. I took a correspondence course when I saw this ad in Popular Mechanics magazine that says, you too can be a stylist, send for this correspondence course, which I did. And I got to uh, know and understand what Harley Earl design rules were. Basically, what his design rules was were long, low, and wide. That was his uh, design rules that he followed when he proposed uh, some car designs. My dad worked for General Motors, but he was an engineer. He wasn't a designer. The thing I told you, when he worked, he started at, at Ford, Henry Ford, 1920. And when you worked 19, when you worked at Ford, you had to agree that when you got paid, you got to show them your savings book to see if you're putting some of your paycheck in your savings account. And that was a Henry Ford rule. If you didn't accept that approach, they wouldn't hire you. Well, you could go to Pratt or you could go to Art Center. And my folks said, uh, California is too far. <laughs> you could go to Pratt. Brooklyn, New York, it's, uh, uh, it's closer to uh, my home. I, uh, before I went to Pratt, I went to Meinzinger Art School and learned how to render, because Pratt didn't teach you how to render uh, objects. All right, this was uh, a car model I designed when I went to Pratt, and the instructor wanted a car to have a lot of form. So I designed this vehicle with a lot of form to it. And it's a convertible. I think it got into a, in a Pontiac studio. I think George Camp was in there with me. <laughs> Production cars. I, I worked on the Bonneville Catalina. I did the 66 front end for those cars. Then I worked on the Grand Prix and the uh, Firebird. Yeah, then I got transferred to uh, Sh uh, Chevy. I worked on the Corvair. And I, then they transferred me to Oldsmobile. <laughs> I like uh, sticking outside the box. If you worked in a production studio, that wouldn't happen. I, like, I didn't like working in a production studio. I worked in the advanced studios. I was in aerodynamic studio, and we took a, a design a Cadillac for a low drag and enclosed the front wheels and skirts so the air could flow through. And we got pretty good uh, uh, you know, drag coefficient compared to what, uh, you know, production 
we were about 1.9 where production was 3.9. I was using this airplane shaped for a car with the points. <laughs> Here's the rear of it. And the tail lights are set in half around and, cr and with, the, with the chrome liner. So when you step on the brakes, this whole thing's going to light up. And I use that idea from the airplane shape. Well, we were, I worked on a uh, two-seater Roadster before uh, when the Miata came out. GM didn't have a little two-seater sport car. And the uh, design staff all, uh, wanted to, to have GM uh, develop a small sport car. And I worked on that. We did a full-size running vehicle we had at the auto show. But as I said before, the bean counters didn't want to have GM spend the money on, a, on another two-seater, smaller two-seater sport car. Now, Harley Earl didn't have that problem because he had the CEO who backed him on anything he wanted. Alfred Sloan, I think his name was. He was the CEO. And he believed in Harley Earl's design approach. Oh, you had to be careful in what you said. He would come in the studio and he'd say, if anybody doesn't like this design we're doing, let the SOB stand up and we'll take a look at them. I said, oh my gosh, you can't open your mouth, you get fired. And he did fire some designs that guys that didn't agree what Harley was proposing. Then we did a hinge car to, for, for parking. You can f fold it up and you can park in a small spot. It, it would hinge. And they thought, the engineer thought we were crazy. <laughs> this design basically I did on a 100 mile per gallon car. And we, d we had a running car that got 100 miles per gallon when Carter was president. Gas was supposed to go to four, four bucks a gallon. And GM was a little worried about maybe we ought to explore a, or, or do a car that's going to give us a good gas mileage. Well, they don't design them the way we used to design them in the 60s. Now that's usually done in the computer. And uh, they're using the stop and start lines on the side of a car. Plus the fact they uh, they don't uh, do a simple approach to car design. They get complicated forms because in the computer you can you can bend the different shapes wherever you want them, and uh, I don't believe in that approach. <laughs> yeah, the simplicity and proportion, very important, I, I consider. All the guys in the, in the design staff signed that when I retired. <laughs> when I retired, they made this poster. <laughs> they gave it to me at my retirement party. <laughs> <laughs>